You know, when someone says something to you through a text or an email or a social media of any kind, and comment on your videos, anything that they might say to you like that, you can't hear the tone of their voice. And uh, it can be terribly misunderstood that way. And a lot of mess is made from that. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, say, if I ask you this, what is that running down? Your face? All right, well, welcome back, folks. Uh, this thing's been clamped up here for, I don't know, three or four days, getting used to its new figure. If I can get you to see it, the back bow in it, the bow this way. Remember, we couldn't have any, he didn't have any before. We're going to check it, though. Take all this crap off of it. I can't measure it like that with uh, uh, the blocks on there because I don't have a straight edge short enough to get in there and do that. So I'm going to bring you over closer, and we're going to take all this crap off and see if we were successful in putting a back bow in that neck with that stripped out truss rod or not. Truss rod's not stripped out and mounted at all. It's the head bolt where the where the uh, the wrench fits it. It's wallered wallered out. All right, let's do it. I wasn't going to make a video tonight. Initially, I wasn't going to and. Several people ask me, I don't know why they want to see this, but they asked me if I would do this on camera. And I said, well, I guess I was going to, I wasn't going to show this part on camera, but I guess I will, because you wanted to see it. Let's see, I need to let one of those go at a time, so they don't fall all over the place. And a bunch of stuff come crumbling down. <laughs> we all know how, how well that goes. I felt uh, something move there just now. Either we just lost the back bow that we had in that, or something happened. We look at that leather sticking on there, man. You can tell it's been had some some pressure <laughs> downward on it. See the fret marks? I think you may get to see that. Yeah. So we had to clamp on there pretty good. Quite a bit of force on the, the old girl. Didn't hurt the neck any. There's no marks back here with the wrench, the where the uh, clamps were, and I don't see the back bow in it right now like I was seeing it. But if we even got it straight, we made some accomplishment. If it's just straight, that's what I need it to be right now. It's straight, so I can do the frets on it. And then where'd my paper go? Wow! You remember before I could do this? Stick the paper in and hold on to it. Yeah, it just goes between the corner. The paper goes between the frets now. Uh, you're not in a good position to see that. And I can't work left handed, but I'll try to show you here. See, it just touches the frets. I think we are perfectly straight right there now. This is a very thin piece of paper, too. Oh, there it goes in. That's weird. That's from fret. Okay, now I was going to say one of the frets must be wore, but I just didn't have the thing down for flat. I'll check this other end on down here. I think it's perfectly flat, straight right now. That would appear to be... See, that just goes... Now that one went a little bit far, but there again, that could be where somebody's being a string a lot in a flat, flat place on the fret. That whole area right there, that's a weird place for that to do that, because that's where it bolts to the body. The body. Very much weird. Well, let's look at it like this. I'll try to keep you in the camera as best I can. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's flat as a pancake. And I think, by doing this again, I'm going to leave it like that. I think by doing this again, clamping it all up again, and the way I was showing you how I used this wrench and this tiny little macro screwdriver, <laughs> and I, I could get them both on there and they were tight. I maybe could even go with a little bit bigger screwdriver. Or use a different head like some of y'all was talking about. Uh, 
I'm almost sure that I can turn that more because the truss rod is pretty tight, but it's not as tight as it was when it first came here. It had all that forward bow in it. Man, it was really jacked down there then. It's not that tight right now. So I'm, I'm about 90%, 95% sure I can tighten that rod more and get uh, just a little bit more out of it. Let me show it to you. Maybe you can make your own call and compare it to the other video. Try to hold it up here where you can see. You remember how much relief it had in it before. There's none there. None whatsoever there now. This is good. 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 I was going to uh, wait. Not even show this part in the next video. Do the frets on it. But I'm not doing the frets on it right now. Because it's too hot. <laughs> you got the air running back in there. But it's still man. I got the window open here now. It's still way too hot in here. I have to peel that leather off of those frets. I didn't put it on the fret here. It was on the, the wood. But uh, we're going to do the frets next. So, I'm not going to hold you clear through all this. It's uh, not all that exciting, really. I'm just coloring the frets blue all the way across the entire fret. And for those that don't know why, so I can see exactly what we've taken off and what's been left behind. Everywhere the file hits it'll remove this blue and whatever's left I'll know the file's not hitting that yet. You know these frets, I might uh, just start this with a, a radius block because I ain't going to have to take very much off of these frets. They're wore a little bit but if you saw in that other video I, I said it was wasn't showing up in the camera like I was seeing it with my eye. <laughs> well, it's just a few frets that are wore like that, and you know, I won't have to remove very much material at all. And I, that way, I can uh, get the uh, frets all even and stuff with the radius block. Maybe I'm going to think about this. All right, I've got my measuring tools out here. I got how to get them out. And uh, this is a Fender Stratocaster. There's a 9.5. Well, that ain't the one I wanted. There's another 9.5, not the one I wanted. There's the one I want. There should be about a 9.5 uh, radius on this. I'm checking it to 12th fret. And all the way up at the end. And at the nut. Now, what I'm doing here is it shining a light because you got bad eyes like mine as you can't see I'm just shining the light up here and looking for it to come through that side I don't know if you've seen any of that or not I'm shining the light back here and looking for light here and I'm not seeing any so this is good it is a 9.5 so from that, I'm going to take, let me get a 9.5 block. Oh God, I hope it's got sandpaper on it. Before I level those frets, before we level the frets, I just want to run that block over. Make sure it is 9.5. Yeah, it's got, no, it don't have paper on it. Well, holy shit. Hold on, i got to put paper on this. Then I'm going to run it up and down through here lightly. See what blue it leaves behind. And uh, it might not have to level them because, man, they're not wore that bad. I know I said before they was. Only, like, one fret right there. Uh, I, they're just not wore as bad as I thought they were or indicated in that other video. Now I really look at focus on them. All right, let me put some paper on here. I'll be back. All right. I've got my 9.5. I've got a, some not very rough sandpaper on it. I'm going to leave the nut in there for right now. And I'm just going to start up here and just gently go back and forth on these frets a few times. Now I'm not going at it, you know, like a wild man would. I never do. It's too hot to work like that. <laughs> Now I can see everywhere that that block is touching. There's a little divot right there and there and there on the second string. One here on the first string. And those little scratches on the end of the fret, there's a little divot right there. 
Man, it is so minute though. I, I'm sure I can take it out with this. I may have put heavier paper on there than that. But I'm pretty sure I can use this block. Man, I wanted to use light paper start with just to rub the blue away. And that's perfect, man. Right here is where a string gets bent a lot. And here, the third string being bent. But this is going to work, yeah. I don't have to level the frets. That's going to save me a lot of work and time. Uh, but I do got to change this paper, though, because that's way too light a paper for this. So hold on, I'll do that. I should have got my shit together before I turn the camera on. But you learn these things as you go. Hold on. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to bore you completely to death with this. I've got some rough paper on here now. Uh, I should have showed you that uh, the old uh, Luthery trick where you put masking tape, stick it to your block. That's what I did here. And stick masking tape to the back of the sandpaper. Then uh, put some CA glue on it and stick the two together. And then when I get done, all I got to do is just peel this off. Like right there. You can see a little place that didn't stick. If I can find a camera. And it uh, saves you a lot of, of time. You don't have to buy sticky uh, sandpaper that way. Now, like I say, I'm going to leave the nut in there because it doesn't need much filing up here. We're just going to get the frets on, you know, all evenly and the places that I still see blue there, just a divot, you know, here and there. We're just going to do this until those places are no longer there. And then I'll color the frets completely blue again. Go over it one more time just to be absolute. And this is going to save him a whole lot of fret material. I see all kind of material on there. So this is taking it down pretty good. Pretty quick. This won't take a lot of his fret material away. Like completely flattening the frets would do. It's still going to be time consuming. But it's, it's going to save a whole lot of fret material. No, more, no deeper than those divots are. And those tiny little flat places. I can get them out with this. I mean, you can see, I don't know if the camera's getting that or not, but it's taken a good bit of fret uh, material away. And we would have to re-radius the frets anyway, and they're getting radius as we speak. Plus getting rid of the divots. I'm going to have to stop and sweep this up and uh, color them blue again. In fact, I'll sweep it up first. And then I'll save you the food. I've got to get this done, man. I don't want to stay down here bent over like this very long. Okay, if you look down this way, you can still see blue on the frets. That's the side of the frets. But I'm talking about across the top. I've already colored them blue again and uh, took them down. As you can see there is no blue on the very tops of the frets and they're quite flat. They're not flat flat so to speak like what you would do when you flatten frets. That's all the cord I've got. But I think you can see there's no more blue on, on the tops of them. No more divots. The way the light's hitting it, it kind of looks like it might be divots there but trust me there's not. The side looks really close. I wish I could get on down here. Then maybe I can get a few of these. See, if you look at that fret from the side, you can still see blue on it. If you look at it straight on, there's no blue on top of it. Oh, I'm running out of cord, man. I'm stretching it. There's a wee little tiny bit right there, but that we've removed when I crown them. And that's the next step. I just saved him a ton of fret wire, <laughs> fret material. And worked up a horrendous sweat. I told you it's hot in here. Wow. I wasn't working hard, but I was working steady. <laughs> and that much of it's done. I'll let you look under that light, but you probably can't see it as well as you did over here. The frets are flat, but they're not flat flat. You know, we didn't remove the radius. We actually put radius in it. At the same time, we were flattening the frets. Normally, I take, I already got it out here because I thought that's what I was going to use. Normally, I take one of these, that's a diamond grit file, and just lay that down on the fretboard and, you know, go up and down the frets and completely flatten them. You take the radius away, but the frets are truly flat. 
and then I put the radius back in. In this case, because there was such a tiny bit of wear, I was able to use the, uh, the radius block wherever it's at and uh, put some pretty hefty sandpaper on it and do it this way. And then I put a lighter sandpaper on it, took a lot of the marks out, so that's going to save me a lot of sanding after I've crowned the finals. I'm not going to do that tonight though because man it's hot. Uh, and I want to see if that stay, th stays, thing stays flat by itself overnight. If I get up in the morning and come in here and the neck is still flat and we're good to go man. Not a problem in the world. Just have to finish the frets and then uh, clamp it back up and get more back bow in it. And uh, it'll be ready to stem home. Cheers. Thanks for watching. So thanks for sweating through it with me. Cheers to you. I'll see you on the next video. Woo -hoo -hoo. The boogity pop. Got the window open. People probably think I'm nuts. But they think that anyway. <laughs>